Greetings guys, gals, and non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. Once again, I am coming to you sick from my couch, so please ignore my voice and inevitable breakout into a coughing fit upon laughing. <laughs> In today's video, I wanted to catch up with a good old friend on Twitter that we haven't caught up with for a hot minute, and that is the transformed wife. The misogyny queen, the trad wife of our dreams, nightmares. So we're gonna look through some of her tweets. I didn't even have to scroll for very long. I screenshot pretty much every single tweet she has made within the past like two weeks. She tweets multiple times a day, every single one as ridiculous as the last. And as always, there's, there's some stuff to say, there's some questions to be asked and some discussions to be had. So that's what we're doing today. Um, but before we get into it, I would like to say thank you to today's patron of the day, Melinda. I appreciate you so much and I hope that you enjoy this video. If you would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash savvy cat. I'll click the top link in the description. And if you want to hear more about it, then you can stick around until the end. Imagine if all young Christian women were learning biblical womanhood from godly older women, how much stronger marriages would be. They'd be keepers at home raising their own children, modest, discreet, sober, with meek and quiet spirits, rather than learning from female preachers. Just a quick note here, ma'am, is that uh, being submissive and not having the ability to be independent and leave your husband. So like being reliant on him for everything is not the same as having a healthy, strong and stable marriage. Those two things are not the same. Um, when divorce became like, you know, socially acceptable, the divorce rates went up because women who were, you know, unhappy could finally leave. Like when women were able to start working and stuff and the divorce rate went up, it's because they could leave, you know? If you have the option to leave and you're unhappy, you're going to take the option to leave. Like the women who stay in marriages despite being unhappy are not in strong marriages. Not getting divorced doesn't mean your marriage is successful. Sometimes the most successful marriages are the ones who accept when to quit and they accept, you know, this person was important to me for this time. We had a great run, but it's just not working anymore. Those are going to be the best relationships. Not all relationships are built to last forever and that's okay. Being submissive and controlled by someone is not an indication of success in a relationship. And that's not something that a lot of people desire. Learning from strong, powerful, like women preachers who are advocating for independence and just being happy and safe and strong. Those are the best people to be learning from because it means that, you know, God's looking out for you in the sense that he wants you to be happy and have the freedom to choose to leave should you be suffering in your relationship, which I think is so much better. Surely that's better. Surely you should be happy that your God wants you to be happy and that women are allowing themselves now to be happy. I don't know. It seems weird that you're like advocating against happiness, but maybe that's just me. Sadly, most families can't get by on one income. I hear this often. Do you know why? Feminism. Women flooded the workforce, lowering wages, thus making it harder to make a living on one income. This is where stepping out in faith and trusting God comes into play. Now, why would women joining the workforce make wages plummet. That doesn't really make a ton of sense. The same number of jobs exist, you know, the companies and things all have the same amount of money. It just gets given to different people. Women didn't start like working and then suddenly like millions upon millions of jobs suddenly became available for women. Women joining the workforce didn't make pay go down significantly. I mean, women do get paid less. I'm glad that you're acknowledging that at least. Women have always been paid less. But the problem is that things got more expensive while wages stayed the same. You look at like a lot of places in the US or the US as a whole, I think, right? Minimum wage has been the same for the past decade, despite inflation, despite everything else getting more expensive, wages for the same jobs have stayed the same. That's the problem is that like with inflation, the wages people pay don't increase. The problem is greed, it's consumerism, it's capitalism. It's the fact that 
oh, I can charge more for my product and I'm earning more money so I can get more stuff and have more power. But I don't want to like give that to my employees and the people who made this possible because I want the most and I want to force them to keep working for me. Because if I give them more money, they have more freedom to do what they want. And I don't want that. So I'm going to keep underpaying them. And I'm going to keep people having to work for me and I'm going to keep getting more and more money while they get less and less because I can do that. More women are forced to join the workforce now. Like a lot of women would like to stay home and be stay at home moms. A lot of men would like to be stay at home dads, you know, but it's just not, it's not really a possibility. Uh, and that's because of inflation and it's because of greed. Men can't find godly wives since even most women who claim to be Christian are feminists with feminist agendas. Most churches aren't biblical. Older women aren't teaching young women what God commands they teach. Churches are just as responsible for the downfall of the family. If a majority of like Christian churches aren't Christian anymore, have you ever considered that maybe you are the one who is wrong? Have you ever considered that maybe people interpret the Bible differently and they apply it differently based on the context of society and life itself? and you haven't adapted and grown the way that society has. The people who wrote the Bible were people, you know, and people throughout time have been interpreting it the way that they interpret it and apply it to their lives in the way that best fits because it's not very specific, you know, it's like fairy tales. It's a lot of just like little stories to teach you stuff. It's not very direct. It's not very specific. You can interpret that and apply it to life in whatever way works for you. And I don't know why so many people just read it and assume that they are 100% correct and nothing is ever allowed to change or adapt. How do you know that these preachers in these churches aren't the ones who are interpreting it correctly? How do you know that God hasn't wanted to change the way that we view it? God shapes us and society and stuff, right? So I, I don't understand it. I really don't get it at all. Like if God influences everything, then surely God has influenced the changes in society, which have influenced the changes in how we read and teach the Bible. Surely if God designed us and all of these things in the way that our brains work and the way that life moves and all the things that we have, then surely he is for change and growth. No, I don't get it. I don't understand. Who told you you were right? Did God tell you? Do you have do you have a screen recording of your FaceTime call? Do you have like a voice recording of your call? Like I need proof that God directly spoke to you and told you that the way you practice Christianity is the only true and correct way because you you're not providing me with any proof. Feminism has taken away women's innate desire to nurture away. They no longer want to have babies and nurture them. They no longer want to nurture their families by being home, cooking healthy meals for them and keeping a beautiful home. God wants you to nurture women. Go home, nurture. This isn't even true. So many women are like nurturing in nature. So many men, so many people are nurturing in nature and they love to nurture things and like, mother things and look after things. Like that is not a trait that has disappeared. So many people would love to stay home and spend time with family. So many people would love to do that. That's something that we are asking for actively is, you know, more paid parental leave for a longer period of time, more accessible, you know, tools to be able to look after your children better and spend more time with your family. That is something that we are actively asking for. And I don't think feminism is what has taken away the ability to do this. It's capitalism that has taken away the ability to do this. Feminism is encouraging, you know, women to do what they want. And some women don't desire having kids. Some women don't desire dedicating their life to that. And that's totally okay. If that's what you wanna do, that's totally okay as well. The whole thing is to just do what you want. If you have kids, yes, you should nurture your kids. You should love your kids. You should look after your kids. Absolutely. And that should be the priority in your life. If you have kids, it should be the priority, but it's also not the only thing you have to have in your life. You can still have other things. You can still work and be a great mother or father or parent. You can still do all of those things. Feminism hasn't killed the nurturing nature of people. You like to sit here and talk about gender roles and how nurturing is for a woman, you know, like looking after kids and being loving and supportive and nurturing is something that women do, not men. 
but also women shouldn't work. So who is who should be working in the fields that require nurturing? Who are going to work in fields with children? Like caregivers, like who's gonna be teachers and the people who, you know, look after kids at daycare centers and children's nurses, um, midwives, you know, all of these jobs that you associate with what a woman's duty is. Obviously those are not exclusive to women and they're not the only jobs that women can do. But in this situation, where you are saying that those are all jobs for women, why are you also advocating for women not doing those jobs? You don't think men are nurturing and men shouldn't be the ones looking after children and men shouldn't be the ones who are doing this and this and this and blah, blah, blah. So then who's meant to do those jobs? If women aren't allowed to work and men aren't allowed to be nurturing, what, what, what are, who's there? What are we doing? Because women have always had those jobs forever, forever. Like now men also have those jobs, but they have been predominantly like jobs of women for a very, very, very long time. Women have always worked. Like I don't, <laughs> women have always worked. They've always been like seamstresses and you know, like handmaidens and all of this. It's just wealthy women who didn't work. And it's still just wealthy women who don't work. This is, this is the thing they always come from. Like women aren't designed to work. Women have worked for forever. Since the beginning of fucking time, women have worked. Wealthy women, wealthy women didn't work. That's, that's it really. <laughs> wealthy people don't work. Nothing's fucking changed. Are you going to spend your days worrying about inflation, wars, and a wicked government? Or are you going to trust God, be thankful, and live for the glory of him by being obedient no matter what the cost? It's your choice. Um, yeah, I am gonna worry about all of those things, actually. Because, wh wh what? Why would I not worry about- All of those things affect me and billions of other people. Like, yeah, I am gonna worry about inflation because it, you know, greatly impacts my quality of life. And I am going to worry about wars because that has the ability to very, very greatly impact my life. And wars that are currently happening very greatly impact other people's lives and end millions of lives. Um, And there's, you know, a lot of ripple effect that does impact literally everyone when there are wars going on. So even if I am a selfish person who only cares about myself, yeah, wars happening do negatively impact my quality of life. And a wicked government? Yeah, I am going to worry about a government. Firstly, they're the problem with inflation and wars in the first place. And also, again, they pass laws and make decisions that greatly impact not only myself, but literally everyone else. And I don't trust God to take care of that because bad shit is happening. God's not doing shit about it. I'm fucking sorry. Like if God wants me to die in a war, I'm not going to accept that or be happy about it. You know, like that's the thing that humans decided to do. We made all of these decisions. I'm not going to sit there and just accept whatever happens because it's what God wanted. Because God also gives you the tools to like, change things, you know? I don't understand this just like sitting here and letting what happens happen because it's what God wants. Then what are you doing? You're sitting here preaching and saying, do this, don't do this, don't do this. Why don't you just sit and do whatever? Because whatever you do, it's what God wants you to do, right? Because God influences all your decisions and what happens and blah, blah. I don't understand. I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. Why, why would I be obedient to God no matter the cost if God wants me dead? <laughs> you know, like, I don't want to fucking die. I don't want to be forced into, you know, not having anywhere to live or being sick when it was preventable. Like, I don't want any of that to happen. And I have the ability to prevent that from happening. So I'm going to do it, you know? I'm like, I'm going to get vaccinated because we have the ability to create vaccines that prevent me from getting sick. So I'm going to use that. Like, if you want to look at it from a, like, God doesn't want you to, perspective, then why did God give us the tools to create that? Why did he implant those ideas in our minds in the first place? Like, how did we end up with them if God didn't, if God didn't want them? You know, like, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand at all. I really, truly don't. 
we have the freedom to help vote for a government and we have the freedom to be able to do whatever we want, really. And so I'm gonna fucking do that. I am going to care and I'm not gonna be obedient to a God that, well, I don't believe in God in the first place, but like, I don't, I don't get it. Many women will use the excuse for divorce that God just wants them to be happy. They have failed to study the Apostle Paul's life. No, we are promised suffering and tribulation. God wants us to find contentment and joy and obedience to him, regardless of our circumstances. See, that's going right off the one that I just read before. That's fucked up. You paint your God out to be such an asshole. Like, I have absolutely no intention of, like, believing in your God at all. Whenever I read any of these sorts of tweets and stuff, my instant thought is, I don't get it. Why? Why are you there? Why are you like celebrating this? It doesn't make sense. And it's so horrific. And then obviously I see other people who are not like this, who are religious and it makes sense. And I get it and I respect it. And I understand like religion and wanting to believe in a God and following a religion. Like I totally get it. It makes a lot of sense. And then I read this shit and I'm like, I don't understand. I don't understand. And like, these are also the people who try to sell you religion. The ones who like effectively are like, God is evil. He is horrific. He is a horrible, horrible being. And he just wants you all to suffer. Join us. Like, no, pff, I don't want to do that. The ones who aren't trying to force me to be religious are the ones who do the best job of selling God to me. You know, like, it's so funny. The ones who were like quiet and calm about their religion and are just like, I believe in this but it's okay if you don't. And then I'm like, I get it. I really understand. And then you are just like, I'm like, no. <laughs> you are doing a really bad sales pitch here because why does God want me to suffer? And why am I expected to sit there and suffer? Why is he like, mm, I'm gonna make your life really fucking miserable, uh, but you're gonna fucking deal with it because it's what I said to do. And because you're doing what I said, maybe after you die, you can live in the clouds. No, sorry. I don't really want to spend my one life fucking suffering and miserable and just like accepting my fate because that sounds awful. And I do think that if you are going to believe in a God, you would want to believe in a God that wants you to be happy and have a good life. I don't find joy in obedience if that obedience is like, hurting me. Obviously, I'm not going to find joy in that. My good lord. International Women's Day, March 8th, is a global day celebrating the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. And then a vomiting emoji. Most young girls want to play with baby dolls and play house. It's part of their nurturing nature that God created them with. Our feminist culture does everything it can to take that nurturing nature out of females. Don't let them. Let your daughters know it's God's will for them. Yeah, a lot of girls like to play baby dolls and like to play house, but so do a lot of boys. Um, so let's get that straight. First of all, a lot of kids like playing those games. I watch Bluey too. I know that they all like playing their different games and they all like playing house together. I was a kid once as well and I played with baby dolls with girls and with boys. We all played those games. I loved my baby dolls. I begged and begged for a baby born, you know, the ones that you like feed and then you have to like change their nappies and stuff. I fucking loved those. I loved, I loved my doll babies. I loved them. I loved playing house. I liked using my like fake kitchens and I liked pretending to like iron things and like vacuum the floor and stuff. I had a jolly good time with that. I loved doing that. Absolutely. And then I also really liked trains and I really liked Hot Wheels cars and I loved playing pirates and like Bob the Builder was like my favorite show for a while. You know, like you can enjoy multiple things. You can have multiple different interests and you can be of any gender and be a nurturing person. And you should encourage that, no matter what the gender of your child, you should encourage being a loving, caring, and nurturing person. And you should be teaching them skills, no matter what, no matter what they are, no matter where they fit, like cooking, cleaning, like maintenance, etc. That should be taught to everyone. Obviously not toddlers, but like that should be encouraged for everyone. Whatever games your kid wants to play, 
you should allow them to do that and you should nurture that and you should, you know, encourage them and support them in whatever they wanna do. The thing with feminism is it doesn't try to squash nurturing out of people. It's not trying to get rid of that in women. It is allowing you to use that outside of yourself, you know? I am a nurturing person. I've always been a nurturing person. I've always been someone who, I love kids. I love animals. I, I really, really love taking care of people. That is something that I've always done. It's a role I assigned myself very, very young. And like, because of feminism, I have the ability to share that much wider. I have the ability to talk about, you know, being compassionate and like loving people and like caring for people and for animals and such, you know, like, and people are able to make careers out of that. People are able to use that voice further. People are able to use the nurturing outside of themselves and their immediate family. And also feminism has allowed us to nurture that nurturing in boys as well and allows them to be more nurturing people and like take the shame away from, you know, stay at home dads and things like that. Feminism enhances nurturing because it also tells you to look after yourself and be kind to yourself, which has never been encouraged prior to this. You won't grow up in the wisdom and the knowledge of the Lord by scrolling through social media or watching religious TV shows or movies. You grow in wisdom by studying and meditating upon God's word and listening to godly male preachers. The other things profit nothing. You said this on Twitter, ma'am. You tweeted this. You said, don't go on social media, you won't learn anything while tweeting it, trying to teach people things. And also you just told me just before that church is bad because it's not Christian anymore. So I'm not gonna learn in church. I'm not gonna learn on Twitter. I'm not gonna learn on TV. Um, and also apparently everyone reads the Bible wrong because they don't read it the way you read it. So there's really no way to do it because if I wanna learn from you, the only person who knows what the Bible is and how to interpret it, I have to be on Twitter and I can't learn on Twitter. So I'm kind of in a bit of a pickle here. I don't really know what I meant to do. You've got to do a better job of that one and maybe, you know, accept that people interpret things differently and not everyone has to believe the Bible in the same way as you. Not everyone has to believe the Bible. Not everyone has to do that. We can all just be our own people and live our lives how we want to. I don't care how you live your life as long as you let me live my life the way I want to as well. All right, that's that's all. God commands children to obey their parents. You are the one who must teach them and insist that they obey you. The earlier you train them to obey you, the easier it is. If you haven't trained them to obey by five years old, it's probably too late. They aren't dogs. Children aren't. <laughs> They aren't dogs. You don't train them. You don't like train them to listen to every single thing that you say. They are their own people with their own thoughts and their own personalities. Children aren't an extension of you. You have to nurture them and love them and support them and encourage them to be good, kind, loving, caring, and respectful people. That's your job as a parent, not to like whip them into being a perfect child who follows exactly a specific set of rules. Why do you think so many people who like, you know, like go off the rails as teenagers are from like strict religious families? You know, why do you think so many like teen pregnancies occur in like Catholic schools and like households where parents are overly strict. It's because they crave independence. They want to figure out life. They want to figure out who they are and like learn more about the world. Restricting them from learning about the world around them isn't helping them. It's only hurting them. And also in turn, it's going to hurt you as well. You have to support your kids, you know? They are their own people. You have to let them be their own people. And sometimes you aren't gonna agree with things that they say and they do. And you just have to accept that. You just have to accept that, you know? And you can't train a kid to obey you. It's not God's will for your kid to like obey you. That's a terrifying thing to say. You can't punish your kid for like being a person and wanting independence and having independent like thoughts and feelings because they're a person and they're going to experience that and you need to let them experience that and you need to let them be a person. Your job as a parent is to love them and it's just to make them safe and keep them healthy 
and just just give them love and the tools that they need to thrive. That's it. I will never understand men who say they'll only marry a woman with a college degree. College makes women stronger feminists with a load of debt. It does nothing to make them better wives, mothers, and housemakers with meek and quiet spirits. It definitely doesn't make them wiser. Okay, well, firstly, you went to college and you are not a strong feminist. It doesn't seem to have made you a stronger feminist. If anything, it made you, like, less of a feminist. So instantly, that's not even true. Um, I also love when they say this, they're like, when people get education, they start to question religion and they start to question their political ideology. My conservative child went to university and got an education and now they're a leftist. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder why. Because all this sounds like is that like facts and education and like the wider world and like knowledge doesn't support strong conservatism. You're just calling yourself uneducated. You're just saying conservatives are uneducated. That's that's what you're really doing here. If you can't go to school and learn more about the world and be around more people and different people and diversity and like maintain your political ideology, maybe your political ideology is wrong. Maybe as soon as you come into contact with people outside of your like bubble, if your political views change, maybe it's because you were restricted prior to that happening. That's that's the correlation here. And why would men want to marry someone with a college degree over someone who is just like submissive and will do what they say? Maybe it's because people want a life partner. Maybe some men don't want a servant. They want a life partner. They want a friend. They want someone who they can have conversations with. They want someone who they can enjoy things with. They want someone whom they view as an equal and who views them as an equal. They don't want the pressure and responsibility of being the only person in the house who can earn money and who can get an income. They don't want to be responsible for everything that happens in the home. That is a big burden to carry. You know, it's not fair to put that on one person and it's not fair to put all of the housework on one person either. People want to share the responsibility. They wanna share the weight. They wanna be able to have conversations and talk about things. They wanna have things in common. They want to agree on things and work together as a team. Not everyone wants to have power over someone and not everyone wants someone to have power over them. Like some people just want a friend. They want a life partner and that is understandable. You should be friends with your partner. And so many of these people don't think you should be friends with your partner. They view a relationship as like a person with power and a person who is controlled. And that is not a healthy relationship. That is not a healthy dynamic, even within relationships with that set up, even within relationships where, you know, you have someone who works and a stay at home parent, you can have that and then still have, you know, mutual respect and conversation and interests. You can have a power dynamic in your relationship and still respect each other. If you invest your life into your husband and children, the rewards will be great. If you invest your life into a career, the rewards will be few. Invest in what is eternal and important. Well, I don't know. I don't have a husband or kids. Um, and I went to a concert in Paris last week and I'm going to LA to go to another concert and go to Disneyland next week. And I couldn't do that if I had kids. So I would say that I feel pretty rewarded. Um, I think it's really fucking cool that I can, you know, just travel the world to go to fucking concerts. Like I might be going to Tokyo in May to go to a concert because I, because I can do that because I don't have any other responsibilities. I can just drop shit and leave. Like I have to budget my money and look away from my bank account, but <laughs> that's something that I have the freedom to do. And I find that very, very rewarding. I feel great about it. I'm so stoked. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. You know, this is the happiest I've ever been in my life. I can do shit. It's great. It's fantastic. It's rewarding. I don't feel like I am ready to have kids. That is not something I would be able to do right now. It is not something that I feel would benefit me right now 
or any kids that I would have. I don't think it would be great for them because I am not in a place where I am ready for that. So for right now, this is what I find rewarding. This is what I find fulfilling. And this is what gives me, you know, purpose is just enjoying life and doing what I can to make the most out of it. And I feel great about it. <laughs> if you wanna be married and have kids, be my guest, that's up to you. Respect everyone, do whatever you want, believe in God or don't, follow whatever religion you want to or no religion at all. It literally doesn't matter. Just as long as you aren't hurting anyone, then it lit it really doesn't matter. Just let people live their lives. Um, that's really, that's really it. It's really not that difficult, honestly. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Um, a massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. And a massive thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons, Toulouse, Bobby, Josh, Mandy, Robbie, Ikazel, Kai, Jessica, Eldo, Ida, Quia Cory, Mick McKenna, Anna, Raven, Danielle, Elias, Evie, Rin, Nix of the Eternal Night, and JD Creeper. I love and appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash savvy cat or click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things like outtakes, uh, bonus mini podcasts, vlog, live streams, etc. Yeah, so thank you so much. I appreciate all of your support endlessly. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the queer kiwi and Twitter, that queer kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe, keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. <laughs>